What's up, everybody? Welcome back. 24 episodes watched and reviewed has brought us to this, which is our layman's review of Jujutsu Kaisen. And we have a new friend. And you can see our little buddy here. <laughs> Ready to go. Anyone no who's emotions. seen the show knows <laughs> that um, every time we review a show we really like, we want to fill the empty void behind us with um, a little bit of uh, character and uh, flair. What better than him? And this is the little guy who was... Yuji's uh, pal during his movie adventures. Once uh, once Yuji was doing his uh, movie binging, he was making sure he, that Yuji controlled his cursed energy. And um, we just thought, what a perfect thing to add to the scene. So every video after this, you're going to see him somewhere, somewhere in the vicinity back here. And would you say that he's the reason Yuji is the way he is? Uh, he he was trained a, him at a young yeah, pup age. you know what? Right. Was, Without yeah. him, Yuji wouldn't be doing the things so he So until did. the next video, he's going to go yep. sit down here for a couple minutes. Um, so... Jujutsu Kaisen, for anybody who's just watching this who haven't watched all 24 episodes that we've done, um, is a anime on Crunchyroll that is animated by Studio Mappa. Fantastic job animating, and I think you alluded earlier that 24 episodes is just a perfect oh, yeah. season. Oh amazing! I, th I, you know, we're only I'm only a few into the anime or anything that we're reviewing has been about on that par of 20 to 24 episodes, and it's been perfect. I think it. It gets you, you can squeeze a couple in a day yeah. or, or whatever it is because they're 20 minutes long. And then by the end of it, I mean, we knocked out this uh, Jujutsu Kaisen fairly quick. And uh, I, I'm ready for the next one. I'm trying to get him <laughs> convinced to watch something like Hunter x Hunter where it's like 150 something episodes. And to him, can that's someone like, leave what? in the comments below on why I should watch Hunter x Hunter at 100 and how many? 150 something. Oh. God, and I'm talking about 24 episodes being perfect. And I could have watched are. another 150 something. <laughs> it was too short. I got done 150 episodes, and it was like, anyway, we're getting back to Jujutsu Kaisen. Yeah. Um, just a general overview of the plot. Uh, we follow Yuji. Um, I'm not going to even attempt to say his first. Yuji Itado Yuji Itadori. It it Itadori. And um, and his classmates of Jujutsu High in the Tokyo School. Yep. And um, that's like Megami, Nobara, uh, and Gojo. taught by Gojo. Yep. And the first season is basically just the introduction to the school, Jujutsu Sorcery as a whole, um, and it's just the progression of the characters that it introduces you to, and the progression that they go through as in their character arcs. Yeah, they develop as a Jujutsu Sorcerer, yeah. and I think it was neat. And you going into it, episode one, we had no idea what Curse Energy was, mm -hmm. and no idea about the Jujutsu schools and their purpose. But I think in twenty four episodes, they truly got you to the point where you understood it and we were you know in some of a couple of the episodes we shot that we were reviewing and reacting to we wanted the powers so, so. one of the challenges of doing an anime of a shonen especially that's an ongoing shonen that's based on a manga is making best, sure one of the best selling of all time apparently i haven't we, neither one we don't read it, it but i you know i think that's neat to put in for whoever does read it when you're going to be breaking seasons based upon the source material being the manga it's a little hard to uh, leave you at a point in time at the end of season one where you feel like you've gotten enough that you're satisfied with and that you're comfortable waiting until season two to uh, in, get more. I'm not comfortable waiting until season two. I wish it was still out. It came well, rolled up back to They one. did a pretty good job of making <laughs> you comfortable waiting because yeah. they gave you enough. And we're Ended gonna, well, but you knew there's more to come. And part of that is because of the arcs that the show brings you on. Yuji's arc, Megumi's arc, no Nobara's arc. Um, the arc of the villains of the show, the cursed spirits. Which so, I'll say for, you know, this being one of our first animes that I've reviewed, the curses were cool as shit. Mm -hmm. You know, I really grown like them. The other day I was at, at work and there was a cart pushing by it sounded just like one. <laughs> and, and this is what I'm doing now. While Ryan got work, terrified for a listening second. Listening to the noise, I'm like, well, hey, that sounds like a curse from uh, Jujutsu Kaisen. <laughs> I didn't tell anybody. I didn't want to get them too excited. So getting back to like the character development and the character arcs, um, I think there weren't there wasn't one bad arc. Nope, paced well. Yep. I think everybody got their show time. Everybody there was yes, Yuji's the main character, but I think everybody kind of shared the same spotlight. Yep, Ooh, and I love that. Who was your favorite arc? Char who was your favorite arc and characters? I don't know. I, so, so favorite character, I really did enjoy Panda Senpai. Uh, I think he was just in a he. They didn't really go in the depth with any of the older years or any of that. But I'd say Gojo and his story and like his purpose at the school. I, I really liked in his trying to upset the apple cart and yeah. And he's the... a teacher, but he's trying to reinvent 
like the whole system because he knows it's broken as we see in it's antiquated you, you see it in there with the the principal and then when they're trying to go after Yuji like that mm -hmm. that is not the way we should be doing it because he has a lot to offer but Gojo's story and then I, I'm a, I'm I'm going to be basic here Yuji's story I think as an overall it's okay to say that the whole yeah. purpose of that cuz Yuji we grew with him we got to see him from he ate a finger and then he's all of a sudden one of the most powerful source the jujitsu I mean, sorcerers. the dude was like an Olympic athlete before oh, he ate the right. finger. So now you paired it with that curse energy that he didn't. I'm assuming he didn't have any of that beforehand. Well, remember, his grandfather tried to tell him in the first episode, I want to tell you something about your mother and father. And he's like, nah, oh, I don't yeah. want to know. Now I want to know. I'm I sure the answer to why Yuji is so damn strong is linked to Maybe the history of, the of his parents. Of course it is. Yeah, it has to be. Yours? Um, what do you? What did you like? What's your your favorite character arc? My favorite arc. It's different. My favorite arc was Megumi's. Um, hmm, okay. I loved how the show. He was introduced in the beginning as being this very um, team first sorcerer. He almost to a fault would default to his teammates, and he would kind of, at his own detriment. Kind of weak. And there was a there was an episode where they play baseball, and he bunted to try to advance Nabara in the bases. When, when he crushed it all he pants. had to do was hit a home run and they scored two <laughs> they runs. all would have scored, yeah. But his mindset at that point was just advance my team to the to the yeah. end goal of Sacrifice winning. Sacrifice yourself exactly. for the team. Self-sacrifice. And when he actually at the end of the show opened up and you saw the potential he had, which the show highlighted several times throughout the season, you got the idea that he could be the strongest uh, the strongest sorcerer at the school. And he has a bigger role to play, I think, coming forward. Since he now from when we met him being that scared, like, reluctant character. And now he's evolved to a, I think, a, a more powerful, outspoken, like, he has clearer direction than he did in the beginning. And I like the plot device of using in the detention center that cursed spirit yeah. that he ran Coolest from. Coolest one, by the way. Couldn't run, he couldn't move when he was around the first one. And at the end of the show, just to show just how far he's come, he beat that same type of cursed spirit with a incomplete domain expansion which just showed to me just how far megami has come um so that was my favorite arc and it was he your favorite character easily toto oh <laughs> easily toto toto to me was just Yuji's best friend if you didn't know i there's nothing you can't <laughs> like about toto i love the fact that he uh he taught yuji how to be a better sorcerer in 30 minutes and, and how to beat him exponentially stronger yep. while he was teaching him. Um, I love the comedic parts with Toto. I love his relationship with case, Yuji. That was a, a good comedic relief. You know how they went through the whole show and they... What kind of woman's did, your did, Huh? <laughs> right. woman's there, that's how we meet Tall, him. Tall, fat ass. So, like you open up ass. with the... Uh, like him being that big bad guy and then he has... He's a little fanboy. Oh, he's a softy. Yeah, because he follows that... that Famous girl yeah. that he goes to handshaking events, and that's all he really lives for. Yeah, um, Toto is my favorite character, hands right. down. I like it. Megumi so we, was my so both arc. of us had favorite characters that didn't necessarily follow the main story. Yeah, you had they were, which is a testament a, to the writing of the yeah, show. Yeah, like and, and that just really that goes to character development. If you have enough time to, to develop your main characters well enough that they, you can then start to focus on your side characters, mm -hmm. that to me, you know, in twenty four episodes. Yeah, twenty four episodes, and you and. You go off to they did a story about Toto and where he came from and grew up. They mm -hmm. did a, a story about Panda and how he became to be. And and in that one or two episodes that it took, or one and a half episodes, whatever they gave him, you were you learned it. You were comfortable with it. Backstory of Mai and Maki. They gave yeah. backstory yep. to uh, Mekamaru. They gave backstory to Panda. They gave backstory to every almost they, every they left character. No stone unturned. And introduced and that to me is a sign of just fantastic writing. Um, and that breeds us, that leads us right into acting and voice acting. And whenever you have a story that's written that good, it's very important. And full context, we watch this subbed. Uh, it is also available in a dub if you're interested he in watching let that. Me do it. Yeah, I'm not gonna <laughs> ruin. I have heard good things. the name of anime. I've heard good things about the dub, not but sure I tried it good. a couple times, and I just I always I, like we sub. said back in one of our, in in Vinland Saga. We'll have a link to that video in the description below. Uh, the the emotion that's captured. This is the thing. When you watch a sub, 
because we're fluent English speakers, you can pick up the inflections of English speakers' voice so much more, and you can critique it to a level that you can't if you don't understand the language that's being spoken. You're almost busy listening to the words as opposed to the, 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 the intent behind it. The only thing that you listen for for a Japanese voice actor is does the emotion fit the scene yep does the level of is the intensity fit the scene his or her intensity fit the scene and 10 out of 10 sometimes with... you didn't even have to read the words i'll be honest because this anime actually had subs on top and i neglected them a lot because i'm a slow reader a lot of times it's like secondary and text. that was fine but mm -hmm. i think for most of it you didn't need to read it because you're watching it and you're listening to just how they are portraying the words and that conveyed enough for me to understand what's going on and yes i'm reading it but I, I think that you know coming from a non like super fan of anime you know you'll get there oh yeah I, I hope and but coming from that that point of view i thought that was you know great and i and i would recommend so far so good and i would recommend people to watch sub so the more you watch a sub the easier it's oh, going to yeah. get to i mean i've watched this is my second full one mm -hmm. so not an expert by any means, but... Villain Saga was a little bit slower. Yes, this, this was, was fast-paced. Fast they, yeah. they shoveled a lot in there, but voice voices, perfect, story, and then On great. top of that, just real quick, is also um, sound effects and music. Um, sound effects, every punch, kick, spell, water effect, it animated yeah. perfectly, and it had, like, punch behind it. Highly recommend watching this show with a sound system because it just brings so much, like depth to the sound the music you had to pay attention to but it was really especially the intro the intros were uh, good and I'd the really outro like them. the outro was yeah. fantastic uh, especially <laughs> the first one <laughs> <laughs> we were like at one point when this episode's <laughs> ended we would just like sit there and like bob our heads to the to the outro it was that good so we touched everything we went over the plot the production the character developments a couple of our favorites, acting, voice acting, sound, music, and that leads us right into the layman's review. Jujutsu Kaisen, to me, belongs in S tier. Okay. And would you put it above or below Vinland Saga? I'd put it below. Okay. I, I think it's just below uh, Vinland Saga. So if I'm ranking it uh, as far as the best shows on the show so far, I think Vinland Saga 1, Jujutsu Kaisen 2. Okay. And uh, I'll concur with that, and I'll give Jujutsu Kaisen an S tier. Mm -hmm. But I will put it above Vinland Saga. And we're only putting the best of the best in S. We're uh, really going to try to grade these shows hard and not just say, everything's fantastic. Nope. But when you review no. a masterpiece, it deserves to be put in a, a masterpiece category, and you're not doing yourself any favors by being needlessly picky. Like, you wouldn't convince me that Vinland would go in front of Jujutsu Kaisen. We're just going to differ we on have, that point. We have one channel, so <laughs> this is going to be complicated to review. Oh, hey, you know what? Right. If we ever got to really get down to it and anybody asks us what is the Die Hard, we'll get into it. I'll tell you what. Anybody who's uh, watching the show who wants to put their opinion, if you've watched both shows, uh, comment below and which us. one's first and which one's <laughs> second and give a reasoning, like why you think... Something um, we missed? On, in S rank, one belongs in front of the other one. And if you dare think that it belongs in a different S than other than S... Please let us know. Yeah, and we will like quickly delete that. that comment. <laughs> no, no, we value all opinions. Uh, no, and, and honestly, again, even if we put it above Vinland Saga, we're talking like 99 and 98. Oh, I'd even give it a point. 99.5, 99. Okay, we're dealing with... Okay, yeah, we're getting too deep We're splitting hairs. Here we are. We're so, S, S Jujutsu for these. Kaisen, S. season one. Please watch it. Yeah, please. I uh, think do yourself it, a favor. It gets, it gets the layman's review seal of approval, and I think... You know, once season two hits, we're going to be very excited. I can't wait. Yeah, me either. Guys, that was a review of Jujutsu Kaisen season one. Uh, please do yourself a favor and watch the show. Uh, even if you don't like sub, watch it dubbed. Uh, just watch right. the and, damn show. I like that there's both. And, you know, if you like what we do, make sure to like and subscribe. Please. And we'll see you next time.